Hi, and welcome to a very special episode of the Haltech Q&A, where it's our 20th episode. So normally on the Haltech Q&A, we answer very specific application-related questions, whereas on this episode, we're going to be taking a better look at how to choose a workshop and how to choose a tuner that's going to be interested in your car. Our first question today comes from John Hook, and he asks, well, hi guys, I've had a couple of bad experiences with tuners who just don't seem to know what they're doing. Do you have any advice on what to look for before letting someone tune your pride and joy? John, it is a good question, and if you're not in the industry, you probably wouldn't know a lot of this sort of stuff. Um, firstly, check out their Facebook or their website page to see the type and style of cars that that tuner typically works on. Give the tuner a call and make sure they're interested in your project and have a general knowledge of the engine that you're using and the kind of mods that you've done. The worst thing you could do would be to take your Honda four-cylinder to a V8 specialist who may have never worked on that engine before. It's not so much a case of no knowledge, it's just a no knowledge in that area. Our next question today comes from Andy Schwartz. And he asks, what sort of skills or specialized tools are required to fit an Elite Series ECU? Well, Andy, it's a really good question and we do get asked this a lot. Wiring an engine management system into a car is a specialized skill within itself, along with setting up the software in order to start the engine, then setting up the fuel and ignition mapping in order to make sure the engine will run. This is normally broken down into two different roles in the shop, the wiring guy and the tuning guy. The wiring guy will have tools including, but not limited to, correctly sized wire several different crimper sets for all different styles of pins, a huge range of connectors, plugs, switches and buttons, wire strippers and cutters, wire sheathing, heat shrink and a good quality electrical tape. There is good and bad electrical tape. A quality LED test light, connector pin removal tools. Um, the wiring guy will also add arsenal to his equipment on every installation. The tuning guy will have a laptop and communications cables to connect to the ECU they're tuning, good knock detection devices to monitor the knock or detonation level of the engine, a wideband oxygen sensor kit to measure the air fuel ratio coming out the exhaust, a good quality timing light to ensure what the tuner is seeing on the laptop is actually what's happening on the engine. I'm sure there's a lot more tools that I've forgotten. But if you see the ones we've talked about, you know you're on the right track. And our last question today comes from Harley D. At what point of the build should you decide on what ECU to use? I've been told to leave the ECU choice till the very end, but I've seen people who research their ECU right at the beginning when they decide on what motor they're gonna use. Well, Harley, this is also a really good question. The first thing to do is to make sure that the engine you choose can be supported by an engine management system. And like all computers, technology is always changing. So if your projects are like mine and they take five years to finish, you might want to think about purchasing your engine management in the last year or so of the build. We're always adding to our list of plug-in engine management systems, and it'd suck if we released a plug-in for your car, but you'd already purchased a wiring ECU years before. Well, this is the end of the 20th episode of the Haltech Q&A. Thanks very much for submitting all the questions and all the feedback along the way. I hope we've cleared up some of the confusion and misconceptions surrounding engine management, and I'm looking forward to answering plenty more questions in the future. As it's been in every other episode, my name's Scott, and I'll see you next time.